Welcome to Jamaica Magazine, the show that brings you the best of our culture, people, and progress. I'm Theodore Henry. As we start this new week, let's be reminded of the words of Marcus Garvey. With confidence, you have won before you have started. So stay with us as we explore the stories that inspire, inform, and celebrate the spirit of Jamaica. The Betting, Gaming and Lotteries Commission is in the process of launching a new gaming management information system aimed at enhancing the quality of services offered to its customers. This new system will allow individuals to access the Commission's services remotely, improving convenience and accessibility. Get the facts next. Welcome to Get the Facts, the program that provides you with the information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm your host, Adrian Atkinson. Today we will be talking about a new gaming management information system that's to be installed at the Betting, Gaming and Lotteries Commission, BGLC. The entity's project manager, Mr. Dwayne Walters, will be telling us all we need to know about this development. Mr. Walters, welcome to the program and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, the BGLC is poised to implement a new gaming management information system and this particular system will transform how it provides services to its customers. Tell us why now. Well, as an entity, our regulator, we are constantly looking at ways to improve our service delivery and by introducing the gaming management information system, this will position the entity in providing efficient, and transparent services to our stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And having said that, what is the timeline we're looking at in terms of implementation? Good question. So currently we are targeting to have a soft launch before the end of this year and then shortly after we have our official launch of the system. And I said the soft launch because we are expected to have um, limited public access to our customer portal to work with some of the kings and fine-tune the system some more before having it generally available to the larger public. Let's talk a little bit about the impact this will have on BGLC as well as its customers. All right. Good question. So the impact this will have on the BGLC, it will translate into greater efficiencies and uh, improvement in our workflows. For the customers, it will translate to a shorter turnaround time for processing their licenses, application and renewals. And of course, that allow accessibility remotely no one need to visit the office physically to apply or um, apply for the applications or media renewals. Mm -hmm. So again, efficiencies, time savings for both the customers and our internal stakeholders. So you used a particular word, remotely. This mm -hmm. is one of the benefits because it can be accessed remotely online. So let's online. talk a little bit more about the other benefits that are available to the customers. All right. So. As you rightfully say, having it available online is a huge benefit, but I need to add to that um, online benefit. Apart right. from just applying for the applications and the renewals, the customers will have the ability to track the applications in real time. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, they also have the ability 
not only the customers, but the general public to lodge any complaints of any illegal activities. So those are some of the benefits um, that we envision this system will usher in. Yes. So uh, we spoke about the whole issue of this platform giving customers the ease uh, to perhaps be licensed or licensed as well as applying for those license mm -hmm. and uh, the issuance of those license. Integrity comes into play in terms of um, license validation and you know, user-friendly public reporting portal. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about um, how does it really, really work? All right, so good question. The vision for the system is to have the general public um, having access to a QR code within the establishments. Mm -hmm. Um, from that, the customer or the public can scan these QR codes and it will tell right there and then in real time if this establishment is a licensed establishment or if the machines, the gaming machines, are indeed legitimate machines. The portal also offers the opportunity to log complaints either by providing full detail or log the complaints anonymously. Mm -hmm. And the, the, how, the, if I may put this in a little bit here, but mm -hmm. anonymous um, complaints, how do I assure myself mm -hmm. that providing the BGLC with this information, I, am, I remain anonymous? All right, so that's an excellent question. Yes. Firstly, the portal, once it is launched, it, there is no requirement to provide your full detail what is of importance though is the substance of the information being reported based on the activity that was observed. All right. Well, we're going to take a break. Let's take a quick break right here and come back to learn more about the BGLC's new gaming management information system. Stay with us. We'll be right back. What do you love most about being an artist? What I like the most about being a visual artist is that it allows me to be myself. What about you? I love the fact that I'm able to express myself without using words and I can let people get a glimpse of what goes on in my mind. If you are someone you know has a passion for creating, whether it's fine arts, web designing, makeup artistry, or even pottery. That's something we don't see every day. Don't let others stop you from going after your dreams. We all only get one chance at life. Make sure you live for you. Welcome back to Get the Facts. We're talking about the Betting, Gaming and Lotteries Commission, BGLC's new gaming management information system. We're talking with Mr. Dwayne Waters, project manager at the BGLC. So you mentioned some ways in which uh, complaints can be made. Let's talk a little bit more about other ways that uh, reports can be made about illegal gaming activities. Sure. So the traditional channel still exists. Persons can walk into the office at 78 CEF Hagley Park Road to make those complaints or call the office lines directly or send an email via info at bglc.gov.jm and last but not least, they can get in touch with Crime Stop. Mm -hmm. So if the general public wants to know more about gaming establishment and uh, gaming machines and how legitimate they are, um, how can you perhaps share some more information in terms of this new management information system? Again, the, the, one of the hallmarks of this new information system, once we do a full system rollout uh, within the establishments, they will have placard on their walls as part of the conditions to license. They will have to display um, information pertaining to the establishment and the machines that are within the establishment. And customers will have, or punters, will have access to these um, 
Science. Science. So, 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 Mr. Walters, let's let's look at uh, their specific places or specific areas within the establishment where they are supposed it to be It should placed. be visible to the punters. Mm -hmm. And once visibility is established, bad word, but it should be visible to the punters. Um, then they can scan um, these QR codes to get information about the establishment and or the gaming machines within the premises. Yes. So with this new system, does it impact the turnaround time? Um, does it, in terms of license re um, renewal and, 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 and how much will this impact cost to the customers? That's a great question. The hallmark of any information system is to increase efficiency. And a part of increasing efficiency is having improved turnaround times for the licensing process and the renewal process. In terms of cost, there will be no additional costs to our customers and the public. But what I should note is that there will be some savings in terms of time and human resource efficiency for both the um, licensees and the BGLC. Mm -hmm. And talking about BGLC, BGLC enforcement work, how does the system impact that? Great question. How this will impact the system will facilitate the tracking of breaches against the BGLA. Um, this will allow for targeted um, inspections and enforcement activities as a result of these um, activities that are being tracked. Yes, we could continue this conversation and all day, but what are the parting words that you would like to leave with our viewers about this new information system, this management information system, and anything else that they, they are to expect? Well, parting words, I would say it is a pivotal milestone in terms of modernizing the operations of the Betting Gaming and Lotteries Commission and also improving the service delivery to our stakeholders, um, both internally and externally. I'm sure everybody's looking forward to this new gaming management information system and the, all the benefits that will derive from it. Well, on that note, our conversation ends for today. I'm sure we are leaving you much more enlightened about the BGLC and its regulatory services to ensure fair gaming. This has been Get the Facts. Our guest was Mr. Dwayne Walters, Project Manager at the Betting, Gaming and Lotteries Commission. For more information on the BGLC, visit their website, bglc.gov.jm. Until next time, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thank you so much for watching. Her story is a window into the Jamaica of yesterday, a treasure of our heritage. Let's hear the story of Miss Delcita Fuller as she talks about her time growing up in our beautiful island, Jamaica. Being Jamaican is a unique, rich experience that encompasses so much. Our food, music, dialect, Wango tell my brother them said. And most importantly, or family. Follow me as I pay a visit to two among that Jamaican family, Miss Delcita and her daughter Glossy, who had a lot to say about our heritage. Go down a Manuel Road, Gallamboy, to go broke rock stone, Gallamboy, Dinga must no cry, Gallamboy, remember the play with the play, Gallamboy. My name is Delcita Fuller. I was born in 1935. I was born in Spanish Town and most of my time spent in St. Catherine. My mother had me and my older sister. My father had two other children, which was not with my mother. Those days you got children got to make your own toys. We didn't get toys like children these days. Only at Christmas they will buy you a toy, and maybe the girl would get a doll or the boy get something else. The girls will make um, plays like ring plays, clap hand plays and um, all sort of different things to enjoy ourselves. <laughs> In the country we don't have shops near us, 
so we would have to go maybe a mile or two to shop. And it was good in those days, people around us looked after children. When our parents send us out, not like now you'd be worrying. In those days we didn't have a lot of taxis and buses and vehicles. Do you know that if I tell you one and six, one shilling and six pence, you wouldn't have no idea how much that is. And I have some coins there that um, it was 20 pence make a shilling. A man's daily wages was a shilling and six pence. But that shilling and six pence, you could take the six pence to the shop and you could buy some flour and you could buy some oil and maybe some salt fish. I met my husband and we um, get together when I was 17 and I had my first child when I was 19 and we lived together until he died. Well, um, we had six children together. My eldest is here. Um, I won't say her age, <laughs> she'll say it. I was born in 1954. All the time in my life, I've always been reminded, especially when I was young, that I was the eldest. And it seemed to me that I was expected to behave as an older child, even when I was, you know, three, four, and five. But on looking back, I feel like the older or the eldest child was always, you know, to take on some sort of responsibility, and that was expected of you. Yes, it was part of the heritage. And I think even when I brought my children, I felt the same sort of thing. I think I brought my children up the way my mother brought me up. In my time, and there was nothing in television in Jamaica, um, and even when I was young, is one or a few people have radio. I tell you, we had fun, because in the evenings at my parents' home, we'd have the visitors and they would play games. And I can think of one, they call it ring play, that could be 10 of you, 6 of you, 12 of you, have a stone in your hand and you'll sit around in a ring and you'll sing. Go down a Manuel Road, Gallam boy, to go broke rock stone, Gallam boy. Dinga mash no cry, Gallam boy. Remember the play with a play, Gallam boy. And in that time, when I pick up my stone, I drop it here and I'm ready to get your stone. And it's going around like that. I stone there and I pick the next and it goes around and around the ring and you had fun. I don't know if you are getting it. I get it. Our memories that make us Jamaicans are the fabric that binds us together. So, what's your heritage? Jamaica is my heritage. Jamaica is my heritage. In this episode of Hit Me With Music, we turn the spotlight on the legendary Jamaican reggae artist Eric Donaldson, whose timeless hit, Cherry O' Baby, has resonated with generations. With a career spanning decades, Donaldson's soulful lyrics and powerful melodies continue to embody the spirit of reggae music. Take a look. A familiar beat that once you hear it, you know what's coming next. Ooh, cherry, oh, cherry, oh, baby. It was the song that would change the life of a long-waiting singer forever. The beginning of what would be a parade of hits, creating the persona Father Festival. The year was 1971, and Eric Donaldson was working an odd job painting houses. 
but his true aspiration was to establish himself as a singer, doing what he loved most and earning from it. His ambition brought him in and around the music circuit, at studios writing for established singers, hugging the spotlight he was longing for. But let's take it back a little further. 1970, there was a, there was a producer called Mr. Minot coming here looking for some reggae songs, hit songs. I, I go to audition with him at Dynamic Sounds. Um, the Slickers was there, was there and Iron Man was there. Uh, about maybe 20 artists was there. But it come down to two songs, which was Cherry o Baby and Johnny Too Bad. The other guy was there talking and complaining and he don't know which one of the songs to sing, to take, to pick, and he picked Johnny Too Bad. Walking down the road with the pistol in the waist, Johnny Too Bad. One of the time I end up at Derek Harriet Place on King Street. <laughs> Come like Derek never recognized the song either, and he picked a song over my song called Love I. <laughs> and I said, Boy, um, are you going to the competition with Cherry or Baby? You know? Because I still have my mind on it. So it's a good song. Yes, his confidence in Cherry or Baby persisted, despite it being passed over several times. There was a man in the, in the area called Mr. Daly. And I was painting his house with the Cherry o Baby song in my pocketbook. And like one of the man I come to paint. And I said, But Eric, are you that is a crooner? You know? And I said, Yes, yeah. what do you have? So I sing the song for him, the Cherry o Baby. And he said, Boy, that song is overpriced, you know, Eric. And uh, even that boosts me and gives me some more impetus to move on with the Cherry o Baby. He entered the 1971 Jamaica Festival Song Competition for the first time and... Exactly what I think would, would, would happen, that's what happened. I was a winner. Eric admits that this was a song that propelled his music in and outside of the national competition. So, who is Cherry? It don't base off of nothing personal. But there's a rumor going around that there was a girl living in the area named Cherry. And there's a rumor going around that Cherry was my girl. But Cherry wasn't my girl. And I want to tell you too, the song, the name of the song wasn't Cherry Oh Baby. It was singing Oh, oh, oh My Little Darling. And then somehow on the last verdict I said, put Cherry oh, call a name, you know. It's just a name. second win six years later and most definitely a hit was Sweet Jamaica, a song written by his friend Winston Wallace. I said, well, is this song going to win, you know? Yeah. So you certain, Mr. Yeah, man. So you take it to Grub Cooper and Fab Five and they recorded it and I voice it and it was exactly so. That year, he won three prizes for Sweet Jamaica, Best Song, Best Performer, and Best Singer. Wallace's second offer would be no different when the duo collaborated again the following year. I will never leave The music is something that is in born, you know. Because some of the years I used to just hear the sound of music in my ears and listening to other type of music on the radio and it's like something just inject the music in my system. So I just say I'm gonna choose music. 
The catalyst to that melodic injection started as early as 13 years old, when young Eric would peruse the local papers for lyrics to his favorite songs. They used to have those songs coming out in the star. Um, I think every evening they used to have songs from America come out in the stars. Uh, Stuckerly, them type of music. So I used to cut them out and paste them in my exercise book till I have a fat exercise book. And I started to practice those songs and learn off of some of them too, you know. Having won the competition seven times, Eric is a staple in Jamaican festival music. And while he is grateful for this, he is bemused as to why this love has not filtered to the tracks he has made outside of the competition by the people in the land of his birth. All the while, Brazil and countries in Africa have embraced Eric's other songs over the years. The same law of the common people, Lonely Nights, Cinderella, it is love I gave you, trouble in Africa, give me some love in. All those songs are hit songs in different countries. I will sing them all two different times on stage. But one thing I say, all these songs that I do and they are hit songs in different countries, right? <clears throat> I want to know if these songs are not good enough for Jamaica people. Otherwise, the people who are listening to my songs and accept them, they must be stupid. In Jamaica, have all the knowledge. <laughs> His frustration has not dampened the mood of this proud Jamaican. He is proud of the platform the competition has given him, and at 77 years old, he is still going strong. <laughs> Jamaica, know that brighter days are ahead. Together, we stand with you. We are resilient and strong. Take each step forward with courage. For your spirit shines brighter than any storm. From all of us here at the Jamaica Information Service, sending love, strength, and unwavering support to each and every one of you. Stay, Stay strong, strong, Jamaica. Jamaica. We're at the end of our program, but be sure to join us again tomorrow for another lineup geared towards providing you with information on the government's policies and initiatives for building a better Jamaica. You may visit our website, gis.gov.jm, to rewatch this show or to catch up on the others we have on the site. I'm Theodore Henry. Thank you for watching. And from our production team here at the GIS, have a blessed Sunday. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.